सैम पिटोडा जी सुरेंद्र शर्मा मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट कमल कमल धालीवाल जी अदर मेम अदर सीनियर लीडर्स हु आर सिटिंग ऑन द स्टेज आई ओसी मेंबर्स ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स आई कैन आल्सो सी सम चिल्ड्रन सो ऑल ऑफ यू आई लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग हियर टुडे I believe there are also some people who have not been able to come because the hall is full. So I was asking, I was asking, where do the Indian weddings happen over here? <laughs> In some such a small hall. Uh, it's an honor for me to come here and speak to you. I was actually invited to Cambridge University to give a talk there on Indian politics and global politics which I did and it was quite a nice nice atmosphere nice talk and I was thinking while I was speaking over there that is quite strange that a Indian political leader can give a talk in cambridge university harvard university but he can't give a talk in india in a university in india right? and the reason is that our government simply does not allow any idea of the opposition any concept of the opposition to be discussed same happens in parliament house when there are important things that we need to speak about demonetization gst the fact that the chinese are sitting inside our territory when we try to raise these questions we are not allowed to raise them in the house it's a fact it's a it's it's shameful but it's true and this is not the india that all of us are used to our our country is a open country country where we pride ourselves on our intelligence respect each other's opinions listen to each other and that atmosphere has been destroyed uh, you can see you can see the narrative in the media and the reason we were forced to walk across india the bharat jodo yatra was because all the institutions that protect the democracy that allow people to speak that allow an expression of voice are captured by the bjp and so we decided that a good way to think about it a good way to act would be to go directly to the people of india and do what used to be a tradition called the yatra yatra is not just a walk across the country many great people in india have gone on a yatra of course the most famous yatra was the one done by the father of the nation mahatma gandhi but there have been others uh, vivekananda ji apparently walked across the country my my sikh friends here guru nanak ji walked across the country Buddha walked across the country. So there's a list of people who have used this idea of the yatra, and the yatra is actually introspection. It is a attempt to understand what is going on in the country, an attempt to listen to people, but also an attempt to understand the voice of the people and express the voice. So it was a wonderful experience for me. I started in Kanyakumari, and we went all the way to Kashmir, thousands of kilometers, in the heat, in rain, in the snow, and we got to understand our country in great detail. We spoke to thousands and thousands of people, farmers, little children, children like you. What's your name? 
Samrat Singh. So kids like Samrat Singh, we met, we met thousands of them. Uh, we met youngsters who were unemployed, asking, you know, the, the most interesting thing was that the biggest issues in India today are unemployment, price rise, and the violence that Indian women face. That third one is a hidden, hidden issue, nobody speaks about it. But when you walk across India and you talk to people, those are the three things that you hear. Most women complaining about the violence that they are facing, the fact that they are worried to walk on the streets of our country, huge amount of unemployment and price rise and the concentration of wealth. You know, one or two business people controlling pretty much every business, interest, yeah, Everybody knows the name. He's become he's become specially famous lately. You can see a lot of lot of sort of reports about his wealth. Huh? Yeah, so you can see that. And it's at the expense of the Indian people. Because when there is no competition in a country, right, and one person is making all the money because of his political connections. The strength of the country, the energy of the country is wasted and weakened. So one of the things that we've been pushing is that we need to allow as many youngsters who want to enter business to enter business. We need to support all of them. We need to make sure that the banking system doesn't just work for one or two people, but works for youngsters, for millions of people who want to build a business. So these are the type of things that we discussed on the Yatra. Um, and it was a very good experience. Also, I'd like to thank many of you who walked with us. You came from different parts of the world. You came from England, you came from the United States, from Canada, from Japan. From all over the world people came and walked with us. So that helped us. You helped us with your support and your energy. So that I'd like to, I'd like to thank all of you for that. So that was the experience of the Yatra. And the interesting thing to me was that what the people of India were saying, unemployment, prices, concentration of wealth, you know, Mr. Adani, it's not in the media at all. In the media we see anger, hatred, violence, then we see Bollywood, Ashwarya Rai, Salman Khan, cricket, we see all these things, but we don't see the real issues that the people of India are facing. So that was quite a learning experience for me. The other thing that some of the speakers alluded to, we walked for almost 4,000 kilometers. It was a huge effort. Five or six people died while we were walking. One of our members of parliament had a heart attack in Punjab and died. Uh, so there was also quite a lot of tragedy taking place. People getting injured, someone falling, you know, breaking an arm or breaking a leg. And in the first five or six days, I started to ask myself, what is my role in the Yatra? What do I have to do? And after thinking about it for a while, I decided that my role was that whoever came into the Yatra, regardless of whether they were rich or poor, young or old, male or female, I decided that my role would be to make them feel that when they walked inside the road, when they entered the Yatra and they came to speak to us, that they should feel that they had come back home. Right? They should get a feeling that they had come back home and they were not speaking to a politician but they were speaking to their brother, their friend. That was the idea I had and I told the people who were working with me that listen, we have to respect every single person who comes and he has to feel that he has come home. And when he leaves, he must feel that he has left home. That we don't want a political relationship with him. 
We want an emotional family relationship with him or her. And that is a very powerful thing because the moment we started to behave like that, the moment we started to say, look, this is, we are going to treat people with respect, immediately the people who were coming started to treat us like family. And you must have seen some of the pictures where it was, it was as if we were meeting our family members. People hugging us, people telling us very emotional things. That was also a very powerful thing in the Yatra. And the other thing I noticed was that throughout this walk, people of all religions came, all castes came, all languages came, but there was no anger, no hatred, no violence, no disrespect. And so the Yatra was demonstrating to the whole country what the real India is about. What Indian values are, what our religions tell us, what our different languages tell us, what our different cultures tell us, that we are one country with many, many different ideas and we have the capability of living together harmoniously, without hatred, without anger, without disrespect. And it's when we do that, that we are successful. Right? That was the message of the Yatra. And of course, on the other side, we have an ideology of hatred and violence, disrespectful ideology that attacks people because of their ideas. And you must have noticed one thing, and this isn't the nature of the BJP and the RSS. If you noticed a statement of the foreign minister, he said, China is much more powerful than us. He said, China is much more powerful than us. How can I pick a fight with them? At the heart of the ideology is cowardice. If you are a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit और सावरकर ने अपनी किताब में लिखा है अगर आपने पढ़ी हो उनकी किताब है उसमें लिखा कि एक दिन उन्होंने और उनके पांच छह मित्रों ने एक मुसलमान व्यक्ति को पीटा और उस दिन उनको बहुत खुश हुआ खुशी हुई तो देखिए अगर पांच लोग एक आदमी को पीटते हैं और फिर फिर उनमें से किसी एक व्यक्ति को बड़ी खुशी हो रही है वो कायरता ही है अगर लड़ना ही है तो एक व्यक्ति से जाके अकेले लड़ लो मगर नहीं पांच दस लोग सावरकर जी के साथ एक व्यक्ति को भेजते हैं तो इनकी आइडियोलॉजी में यह भी है इफ समवन इज स्ट्रांगर एंड द फॉरेन मिनिस्टर ऑफ द कंट्री सेइंग इट यू इमेजिन ही इज सेइंग चाइना इज स्ट्रांगर देन अस सो वी कांट फाइट विद देम अच्छा द ब्रिटिश वाज स्ट्रांगर देन अस सो देन वी शुड नॉट हैव फॉट विद देम हाउ how would we ever get independence? How would we ever get independence if we had followed the BJP's principle and the RSS principle? That if they are stronger than us, if they are stronger than we don't fight them, we would be still ruled by the British. Right? So at the heart of their idea is cowardice. And that's the lesson for everybody and including the people in India. As you said, 
डरो मत डरने की कोई जरूरत नहीं इनसे And in fact, the way I look at it, the more they attack me, the better that is for me. Because the more I understand, the more I learn. Okay? So, so this is a fight between courage and cowardice. It's a fight between respect and disrespect. It's a fight between love and hatred. जो मैंने कहा था भारत छोड़ो यात्रा में नफरत के बाजार में हम मोहब्बत की दुकान खोलने आए हैं दैट इज द मैसेज दैट आई वुड लीव यू एज ए कम्युनिटी इन दिस कंट्री यू हैव डन अस ऑल वेरी प्राउड एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू हैव डन अस प्राउड because you've been successful because you've made a lot of money you've developed a lot of businesses but that's not the real reason you made us proud the real reason you made us proud is because you respect the people you live with you respect the different cultures you respect the fact that you're living in england you listen to their perspective you embrace their perspective you tell them about our perspective and in that way both groups of people improve and do better so you have shown in your living here you have shown what an actual indian person should be doing living peacefully affectionately with respect listening to other people learning from other people and also as a result of our history as a result of our tradition teaching other people what we know so i'd like to end by thanking all of you for making our country proud by shining <laughs> by by being a shining example of what it means to be indian of being respectful of being loving and affectionate to everybody around thank you very much jai hind